Well, good morning. Uh, it's a rainy day here today. Um, and uh, so I've been having a lazy morning. I'm just drinking some chamomile tea here to chill out. Uh, there's always so much work to be done this time of year in uh, the garden and I've been trying to uh, keep up but <laughs> everything is getting out of hand. Uh, repotting like a madman, uh, particularly all of the uh, Fukidan right now. They're already starting to uh, go into growth, the roots are, and so uh, it's a problem. Uh, when you repot, you end up uh, destroying some of the growing tips, but uh, I'm trying to get that done by the end of this week, so it's a little bit of a stress there. Um, what's going on in the garden? Well, in the garden we have all kinds of things going on. We have uh, all the Dendrobium maniliformi, the uh, Japanese uh, native Dendrobium species, is uh, in full flower. Uh, the early blooming ones have already done their thing and have passed, but we have a whole host of other ones coming on like this little guy here. Um, this in fact is a hybrid, uh, an unknown hybrid that was given to me, another gift. Boy, I'll tell you, am I lucky or what? And uh, it's kind of cool. It has this little like uh, kind of chunky flower, although you can see in the middle there's this more normal type one, which kind of makes me wonder if there isn't another plant in there because they clonally look very different so anyway that's kind of interesting and there's lots of little uh, dwarf ones growing up in the trees I guess they're all kind of dwarf and um, boy so those are just going to town uh, also up here in my um, crepe myrtle tree is uh, another hybrid with manila formia this time with uh, dendrobium uh, nobile which is a Chinese species large flowered and you can see the flowers on this are just this incredible rich purple and it's just growing like mad and flowering great it's been up there through some of the harshest winters well, actually the harshest winters we've ever had here that I've experienced in the last 15 years and it's growing and flowering and, and so it looks uh, solid I've lost a lot of different uh, non-native orchids that I've tried out here and uh, including dendrobiums uh, and manila formi hybrids but I'm uh, sorry but not manila formi, a dendrobium uh, nobody hybrids but this uh, this guy's doing really well um, gosh what else is going on well all around me are uh, bletula it's bletula season now so bletula striata in particular is uh, what's flowering at the moment. You can see here this is the uh, Fukudin variety, which uh, Fukudin means um, the white edging along all of the, uh, the parts. So this would be, in this case, the flower part, sometimes for certain, uh, all kinds of plants. It can also be a white edging on the leaves, a white variegation. You can see it's real windy here today. <laughs> We're getting a lot of breeze. Uh, and, uh, gosh, what else do we have? We have, uh, this is the naturally occurring blue cast form of striata. This is dendrobium, uh, dendrobium. <laughs> this is striata variety, uh, Murasaki Shikibu, which is, uh, originally from Oita Prefecture on Kyushu here, uh, wild collected, said to be true from seed. Um, so that's a beauty. I have another one that's just coming on here, Soju. That one is supposedly another uh, collection uh, of a wild plant from Wakayama Ken, but uh, Wakayama Prefecture, that is in English, sorry. But uh, I don't know. Um, that could be a hybrid, I think, with the Chinese species that was once known as Chiswanense and now is. Uh, considered a, a variety of Formosana. Okay, over here we have the uh, hybrid uh, between striata and the Chinese yellow flowering species, Acrasia. This is uh, this is a man-made hybrid, um, and this is called uh, Brigantis. Okay, beautiful plant, lovely mixture of the two, the yellow in the lip and the purple flowers, and the more uh, kind of a delicate and smaller flower like Ocrasia. And of course we have the two um, Kalanthe here from last week, the Satsuma hybrid and the Kozu hybrid. 
Um, lots of other stuff going on in the garden. Uh, the ferns are starting to explode into growth, as is everything else. You can see my uh, staghorn ferns have been growing uh, like crazy. Um, you'll notice that I, if you follow my channel and you follow my blog, you'll see that uh, I took it off the tree. I had it mounted to this great myrtle tree because it was actually killing the tree. Um, and I'll get into that into a later episode about trying to salvage this poor tree. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and remount it later on, and that'll be in another video. Um, today's video is going to be real short, and well, not as short as I'd like it to be, actually, but it's going to be uh, not so much about um, what's going on in the garden. I'll show you a little bit. Uh, but it's going to be about uh, kind of the new direction I want to move into, which is this idea of uh, doing more interactive things with my audience. So um, I've got uh, some questions here some people have been asking and also some comments that people have made about the channel uh, recently. And uh, I did ask for that, and I appreciate it. Um, so let's see, Sylvie Porter suggested that I do a couple things. Uh, one thing was that I try to do Q&A. Okay, so let's see. First question was from Louis Jiang. He asked, what job lets you afford all those plants? Well, uh, <laughs> you know, it might seem like I'm, I'm rich, but as you can see from my clothing, I'm anything but. Um, I'm a school teacher. Uh, I teach uh, English here in Japan. There are actually very few jobs you can do in Japan other than teaching and um, also some entertainment type industry too. There's some of that, but mostly it's teaching English. And <clears throat> we do get a pretty good hourly wage, but uh, we don't make a lot of money by any means. Um, so the plants that you see around me are, many of them are from uh, they're either gifts or they're plants that I got on the cheap. Many of them I grew from seed. Uh, they're also an accumulation of over 15 years of growing. Now, have I spent a lot of money on plants? Yeah, I have. Particularly things like the Fukidan. Fukidan, which is the Neophanetia falcata, can be very expensive. And I have sunk a fair amount of money into that, but not as much as you would think. Um, Again, a lot of things I've grown from seed, like this, I, I have a cycad collection. If you know what cycads are, those can be very expensive. But many of those I grew from seed, or again, I got them on the cheap. Uh, regardless, I would grow plants anyway, because I am a kind of a plant nut. It's just a part of my soul, and uh, I can't not do it. Also, importantly, I don't have a car. That saves me quite a bit of money. Um, I live simply. I live a very simple life. Right? So that's how I can afford it. Um, okay, boy, I can't even say this name. Uh, Bet in Betina's Orange Box Com asked, "What were those white bits you were putting in with the Neophanidia repotting, please?" Um, and I love this name. Rice stuffed octopus responded. The word on the ribbon reads uh, magamp, a kind of fertilizer. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's a fertilizer. It's a slow-release fertilizer that's created by uh, created by Hyponex, Japanese company. Uh, it's designed as a slow-release um, for plants that can't handle a big surge of, of nutrients all at one time. And, you know, Neophanidia, they like to grow uh, with good feeding, but they don't want to be overwhelmed either. Um, so I am trying it out this year. It's the first time I've used it. Uh, one grower told me that he's used it, and he actually has stopped using it because, in fact, it tends to create a problem in the moss. The sphagnum moss you put in there, it tends to create a algal growth so he stopped using it, but he said that the flowering is excellent with it for Neophanidia. So, uh, and I'll get into this later. I grow my Neophanidia well, but I've been having trouble with flowering them. So we'll talk more about that in another video. Okay, now comments. Um, Joyce L. commented about my rose video. I love that rose garden, but not the background music. Sorry. 
Um, yeah, well, you know, about a year ago, I decided, or more than a year now, two years back, sorry, I decided to try to incorporate some music into what I call beauty videos, okay? And uh, this is just to try to uh, have uh, an appreciation for uh, particularly flower gardens. Um, really, it was an experimental thing for me, and I, you know, wasn't sure where I was going to go with it. But uh, apparently some people enjoy it, some people don't. Um, the Rose video has done really well, so I tried doing a bunch of videos like that last year. And as I told you before, they haven't been doing so great, but uh, in terms of viewership, you know, maybe 10,000, 11,000 views on some. So I'm not sure how to feel about that. Uh, so if you have any comments about that kind of video, if I should keep making them or not, I would appreciate any comments you have about that too. Uh, one last thing about uh, content. I've had a number of people ask me about using my content for their channels. So this might be as a, a background video or whatever. And uh, I don't have a problem with that, okay? Um, as long as you're not you know, actually selling a product with my material, I don't really care. And even if you are trying to sell a product with my material, all I would say is, you know, talk to me, you know? Um, and, you know, I'll give you the go-ahead. Also, I mean, I appreciate a shout-out, right? I mean, I don't do this for free. So uh, it would be really nice if you would uh, say, hey, thanks to Botany Boy, here's his channel, here's his link, go check him out. That would be great. Uh, about reposting my material on other media directly, um, say into other languages or just as is, I really appreciate it if you don't do that. Um, yeah, I just don't want it. That kind of sets a bad precedent. I get out of control of my uh, my content that way. You know, the internet is the wild west, and uh, things are going to happen, and I appreciate that. Um, but uh, you know, I don't certainly want to promote that. Uh, I have to tell you that I do get upset when I see people using my photography and or any of my uh, content in terms of what comes out of my brain directly on their sites, in particular to sell things. Um, that's just the way I feel about it. Sorry, I don't know what else to say. Anyway, um, so there's a little Q&A. Uh, not real exciting today, sorry about that. Um, hopefully you'll enjoy the, uh, the plants that I have and uh, shown you today out in the garden. And next week we'll come back in and we'll do a video that's uh, a little bit more connected to something within the garden and or in this area. So anyway, thanks for watching today and um, see you in the next video.